Hi everybody, I'm Eric Brooks with Alpine Electronics, and today we're gonna to talk about our new head units from Alpine. There are a few models that all do the same thing. We're gonna focus on this one, but they're all the same, right? So we have an ILX 507, which is a seven inch double den. We have an ILX F509, a floating nine inch display. This one is an ILX F511, an 11 inch display. And then we have two Jeep units, the I509, WRAJK and the I-509 WRAJL that all have the same features. Let's check it out. So all of these units have a very wide feature set, right? There's a lot of things that these can do. Let me go through and show you just a few of the high level features, and then we'll dive into some of the things that really make these units special. So first off, you'll see when you see the display right out of the box, it, it looks gorgeous. It's very vivid, it's very bright. It's a 720p high definition display, right? So the, the screen looks great. It also has uh, maestro capability, so we can tie in with the vehicle and actually see gauges and uh, air conditioning controls and all of those things that your car makes available through the Maestro module. It has HD radio, it has wireless CarPlay and wired CarPlay and wireless Android Auto and wired Android Auto. So you can do either or with this. It has Bluetooth audio streaming. It has Bluetooth uh, phone connectivity too. Uh, it also has HDMI input and output. It's HDCP compatible. That means whatever we put in on the HDMI signal going in, it will be able to send that out. So if you have rear seat uh, monitors, you can use those and play whatever you're playing here back there too. So some other features this has, it has dual camera inputs. So you can add a rear and a front camera for drive assist. And we also have this really cool dash camera called the DVR-C320R. This unit can actually tie in and control this advanced dash camera system. So it gives us front camera and rear camera. It has lane departure warnings, it has front collision, rear collision warnings that are all uh, customizable, how they work, uh, when they come on and off. So you can really go in through the head unit and set all this up. You can also see your live view from the camera right on the screen. So it's a really cool thing to add to the system. Uh, another thing that we've added to this is something called an RUX HO2. This is our volume slash subwoofer knob. So this is brand new. It's Bluetooth battery powered. It comes with a bracket that can fit right on the back of the screen here, or you can mount it anywhere in your vehicle. And it's Bluetooth, so it's easy to install. And what it gives you the chance to do is a quick and easy way to change your volume. If you push in and turn, you can change your subwoofer level control. So it's an easy way to quickly control your system. So we have that, that knob capability. And then we have uh, really what makes this stuff special is uh, the capability to play high resolution audio, right? There's two reasons, in my opinion, why you would change the head unit in your car. Number one would be for technology. Maybe I want CarPlay or Android Auto for safety for myself or my family if they're driving. Uh, the other thing that I would want is better sound, right? A lot of people don't think about it that way, but a big reason why you should change your head unit to a specific brand like Alpine would be because because you're going to get better sound. Why spend the money if you're going to have the same sound that you had before? So better sound is a big thing. And these units give us high resolution audio capability. So let's talk about high res. Okay, for many, many years, the reference for great sound was CD. And I'm going to throw a lot of numbers out here at you. But CD uh, operates at 44 kilohertz, 16 bit. Right, And then as time went on, we uh, introduced streaming services, right? So you have your cell phone and maybe you have Pandora or Spotify or anything like that that you can stream from your, your phone directly to your, uh, your head unit. It's a great way to get a lot of content very easily into your head unit versus back in the 90s when I had this folder full of 300 CDs that I had to flip through, right? So streaming made it a lot easier. But the problem with streaming is it was actually, it's actually less resolution than CD. CD sound better, right? So what high resolution does, it actually gives us more accurate reproduction of sound like we're in the studio, right? So this can play back at a resolution of 96 kilohertz, 24 bit, right? So let's take just a minute and talk about 
these different numbers that I'm throwing out at you. Earlier this year, we introduced a product line called Alpine F number one status. It is the ultimate in high resolution playback. It has what's called full spec high res. It's 384 kilohertz, 32 bit playback. We also have a product line called Status, which uh, plays back at 192 kilohertz, 24 bit. So let's break down a little bit about what these uh, different numbers mean, right? So I'm going to give you a simple analogy. Um, you know, you could probably pick it apart, but it'll give you an idea of what high resolution is. So if we could imagine ourselves in a room and on the other side of that wall, there's a band playing, right? So let's think of the bit rate as the size of opening that we're going to allow the sound through. So 16 bit, we can reference that with a window right? 24-bit, we'll reference that with a door. And then if you're lucky enough to have a 32-bit playback, that would be the size of a garage door, okay? So what would happen is this window, there's a band playing on the other side, this window, we would open that window 44,000 times a second so that all this information is able to come through and we can hear great sound, right? That's what a CD does. 44,000 times a second, 16 bits of data coming through, right? So this can play 9624. So it's that larger door and it's opening 96,000 times a second, right? So you're getting much more information than you would from a CD. What that gives us is a more lifelike a reproduction of sound in the car. You sound more like you're in the studio with the artist, right? There's, there's a, a depth to the sound that wasn't there with CD. CD still sounds great, and, and this can reproduce those resolutions uh, quite, quite wonderfully, but that high resolution just adds a dynamic to the sound. So that's something that's very important. Now, getting high resolution audio into the vehicle has been a challenge, right? So there are ways to do it. You can download music from different websites and save it on a mass storage device like a thumb drive, plug it in and access that through your head unit. That's one way to do it. Uh, but for the limitations of it, so like if I have an iPhone, there's really no easy way to get high resolution sound from this iPhone to my head unit. It won't do it through CarPlay, it's limited. And uh, even though it says it's lossless, it's not necessarily high resolution if you're listening to Apple Music, right? So the only way to actually get high resolution music off of this device that I'm aware of is you have to save that, that file onto the phone and then access it through a uh, lightning to USB adapter. And then the head unit has to see this as a mass storage device to play that music, right? So that's kind of a challenge. Challenge. Now, Android has a little bit of an advantage. They have something called an LDAC, right? And this unit has an LDAC. So you can actually stream Bluetooth high resolution information from an Android phone using an LDAC to this unit with an LDAC built in. So it's a little e easier for uh, Android users, right? But something that's really significant about these radios and is going to be the easiest way to get high resolution audio into this system is through a, a source called Tidal, right? So there's an update that's uh, available that gives us Tidal on the screen as a source in this head unit, right? So we hook up either through the hotspot on our phone or we add a hotspot to the vehicle and then it streams from that hotspot directly to the head unit all of this high resolution information. And it works just like any other source, right? So we have it here on the screen, we touch title and I'm not connected. So I have to connect to title, which is easy enough to do, right? So I go here, I turn on my hotspot so go hotspot on, we'll go Wi-Fi setup, connect. We're connecting Wi-Fi. And there we go. So now I have all of my source. I have all my playlists listed here and we have music playing, right? So we can go back and when we play information here, it'll show us the resolution. So uh, Tidal has something called Master Tracks, and that in indicates that it's a high resolution file. So you can see here that this is a master file and it's playing high resolution information. So it's really easy to do. I just link to my hotspot on my phone and Tidal's now activated and working. I can search all my playlists. I can create new playlists right from Tidal itself. Really cool, easy way to get high resolution audio into your vehicle. Now, I talked about an update. So this is something that's very important. Maybe you've already bought one of these units, a 507, an ILX F509, an ILX F511, 
or one of our GPED units. Now, something that's very important for you to do is you need to register these products through Alpine because whenever we have an update available, we will send you information saying, hey, there's an update available for your head unit. So you can now go and add things to these units. What's really cool about this platform is the ability to actually change the way these units work through updates. Before, it didn't have title. Now it does. It's like magic, right? So we have title capability. Uh, we have other features that will be uh, unlocked as time goes on. So you'll see other new industry first features coming from Alpine. But the only way to know is if you're registered and you, you get notification of those updates available, right? So very easy to update but you wanna make sure you know about it. So that's how you do that. So title, we talked about title. We talked about high resolution and the importance of it, how it sounds great. And, and it's really gonna expand the experience that you get in the vehicle listening to music. But every car is different, right? And because every car is different, we have the capability of tuning this audio system for your needs in your vehicle. So let's go back here. We're gonna to go to our easy sound setting page, right? So this is a single page where we can access all of these different features like EQ, crossover, and time correction. So let's talk about what these do. First off, let's go to time correction. So if I'm sitting in a home stereo system, right? And I'm listening, I've got my my uh, my pipe in my ascot, I'm sitting in my, my dark room listening to this high-end sound system. I'm sitting in the center of the sound stage, right? I have a speaker to the left and a speaker to the right and I'm right here in the sweet spot and that artist is singing to me right from the middle of the sound stage. Well, in a vehicle, it's more challenging, right? Because we have a speaker way over there and we have a speaker right here and then we have speakers in the back of the car too. Well, what time correction does is it electronically slows down the information to each speaker accordingly so that it puts you back in the center of the sound stage. So you go from hearing this sound first because it arrives first, it's closer to you, to where it electronically slows it down so that you're back in the middle of the concert, right? So you have that image, that singer singing right to you from the center of the dash. And it's a really cool experience once, you, once you've had it. So the way ours works, everyone does time correction a little differently. I want to explain how Alpine does it. So what we do is we uh, have the furthest speaker, which is typically the right front, at zero. We do no time correction on the right front. And then from there, we find the difference for each speaker and input that difference into the system. So for easy math, because I'm kind of simple this way, we'll say that that speaker, that front right speaker, is 40 inches from me. Okay, this speaker is 20 inches from me. So what's the difference in measurement? Hmm, it's 20 inches. So I would go in here and I would change this. You can do it milliseconds, you can do it centimeters, or you can do it inches, and then you would add the delay, right? So we're gonna get as close as we can to 20 inches, and we can push and hold, that way it goes a little faster, right? So we get to 20 inches, and boom you're all set, okay? And what you'll hear is that sound stage go from right here at the speaker and it'll fade over to the middle and it'll give you a great image. So that's how time correction works. Then we go into something called the crossover. And people ask me all the time, oh, well, what's a crossover do anyway? Well, I'll tell you what it does. It tells what sound to go to what speaker. So in this system, if we have, you know, uh, mid-range and tweeters here in the dash, um, those don't play deep bass notes, right? So we need to take that deep bass out of them to, to protect them, right? That way they work more efficiently. If we have a subwoofer in the back, we don't want that to play the same sound as a tweeter because it doesn't do it efficiently. So we want to cut that sound out and that's what crossovers do. So you can see here in crossovers, we have front, rear, and subwoofer crossovers. So you can go in, you can change the, the uh, attenuation of the channel itself. If one channel's too high, you can bring it down. You can select the sound that you want to adjust. So typically for like a six and a half inch driver, you might select uh, 80 hertz, which is uh, like a kick drum sound. You don't wanna play anything below that on a speaker that small. So we'll say, okay, at 80 hertz, we're gonna cut off that sound and you select this slope, right? And what the slope does, it tells you what the rate of decay is on that sound. So we're gonna say, okay, I don't wanna play anything below 80 hertz. 
and I want it to cut off slowly, so it'll slowly roll off. That would be 6 dB per octave. Or I can cut it off a little faster, 12 dB, or 18 dB, or 24 dB. So I have all of these adjustments, and I can do it for front, rear, and subwoofer independently in this system. So crossovers are very important. The next thing that we have is this EQ setting, right? So uh, this has actually three different types of EQs in here. It has an advanced EQ. It has a basic EQ, which gives us front, rear, and subwoofer adjustment. And then it has preset EQs. So we have multiple preset EQs. So if I wanna listen to it, you know, and, and change it for a jazz setting or a rock setting or a pop setting, I can make all those right there on the fly. But what we're gonna talk about is our advanced EQ. What this advanced EQ does is it gives us the capability to independently adjust the sound for each channel. Front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and subwoofer, right? So we can really get in and dial our system in the way we want it. So, okay, so we talked about high resolution. We talked about this stuff. Bandwidth is this line here. Okay, this is the sound that's playing through the system, right? So the lowest the human ear can hear is 20 hertz, if you have a perfect ear. I don't anymore, but they say you can hear down to 20 hertz. And the highest the human ear can hear is 20 kilohertz. That's the high range. That's like the tweeters and the cymbals and all that stuff. So 20 kilohertz. Now, high resolution, the bandwidth is even wider. The bandwidth on this goes out to 40 kilohertz. Okay, so it's beyond what the human ear can hear. And um, why is that important? Well, it adds definition and, and, and an identity to the music that's not there in a subpar system. So I've heard an analogy uh, this way, um, you know, oh, well, if I can't hear it, why do I need it in the system? Okay, let me ask you this. I think you can tell by looking at me, I like cake, right? But I can't taste the salt in the cake, but it's in there, right? So you may not be able to hear this information that's out beyond what the ear can hear, it's still there and it will affect the way that the music sounds, right? So it's very important. So we have 13 bands of adjustment per channel, like I said. So you can go in and you can pick what, what sound you want to change. And then there's this thing called a cue. What the cue does is it, it tells the system, okay, we're gonna pinpoint this one sound and adjust it sharply, or we're gonna affect other sounds beside it. Right, so a wide cue affects more sounds, a narrow cue pinpoints a sound. So we can go and we can boost that bass if we want to at 40 hertz, and you can change the cue from wide to medium to narrow. And you can go in and do that accordingly throughout the bands. So you have 13 different bands that you can adjust, and you can do that as needed. So the, the best way to do this is using an RTA. So you can actually see the sound using a microphone and, a, and an instrument uh, to, to look at that. But you can also do it by ear if you're confident in doing that. But this gives us the ability to really dial in the sound system to operate its best in your vehicle, right? And not all manufacturers deliver this level of of customization to the sound that we do. So it's a very important part of the feature set of these new units. So there you go, we, we've given you a brief overview of some of the key features of the units. We've talked about our knob, which is really cool, but we've talked about some really cool stuff that not a lot of people know about, which is high resolution audio and the tunability of our sound systems. So I hope we've been able to give you some information there that's useful. And until we meet again, thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you soon.